in the U.S. specifically, the fines are so massive for every contact that are leaked that it, it literally is a zero-sum game. You're going to be dead from the fines. But if you can show that you had a team in place and you can show that you had a, a cybersecurity plan and policies and procedures and you were being proactive about it versus reactive about it, the statistics in court is is that you will win in the, and it will be thrown out 98% of the time because the courts know hacking's going to happen. It's more about were you being responsible as a business owner or were you being negligent as a business owner that they care about? I mean, Equifax got the biggest hack in the history of the world and, and six months later, they're working for the government and they're doing the cybersecurity for their pension fund. Like, think about how ironic that is, right? So they know you're going to get hacked. The question is, were you being proactive or were you being negligent? And so that's something for all business owners to think about, because if you're being negligent and something gets hacked and all the information gets leaked out, you are going to get hammer smashed in a lawsuit. Hey everyone, this is Mark DeGrasse, the president of Digital Marketer, and this is the podcast that keeps you up to date on everything you need to know when it comes to digital marketing, from the platforms you focused on to the good news tactics and tools that are working today. Today, our guest is Aaron Parkinson, the owner of Seven Mile Media, and we're going to be talking about a something that's impacting a bunch of agencies and businesses that do a ton of meta advertising and actually uh, sort of lost him $400,000, uh, but he's correcting the problem. So we're going to talk about the problem, the solution, and how you could not lose $400,000. So welcome, Aaron. Ah, thank you so much. What a great intro. How to not lose $400,000. That that should get some attention, shouldn't it? It would. It's like, oh, you always talk about getting all this money. It's like, no, we're just going to try to keep what we have and, and fix things. So why don't we start with uh, kind of the, the situation that you're uh, finding some of your, your clients in right now? Yeah, I, I think you 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 kind of prefaced it well there. With everybody's always trying to find the new the new trick, the new hack, the new AI tool. The how, you know how do we increase you know profits and revenue and LTV and all and all that stuff is awesome. But you know what's way better? It's it's not losing the money that you're already making. And so you know you know I have an agency, Mark, and and we have a retainer based model. And I'm always looking at what are the big rocks that can help the customer experience improve and obviously increase our retention and our lifetime value of our clients. And in the last month, we had three different clients have their meta accounts hacked. And it's the single largest surge that we've seen in any one given time. And here's the reality. One of the clients was doing 200,000 a month um, through Meta, one of the clients was doing about eighty thousand a month in revenue through Meta, and the other one was doing six hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month through Meta. And when an account gets hacked, it never works right. After that, it, it, we have recovered multiple accounts. The payment processing on there it doesn't work right. That it's glitchy. It doesn't serve to the right audiences. Like it's just, it's just tainted. So this isn't a scenario of oh, you know, I got hacked. Let's get it back and let's just fire up the the engine again, it, it doesn't work that way. And if you're not familiar with how Meta is structured, when you start a new ad account, which in many cases these people are going to have to do, they cap you at a $50 a day ad spend for as long as six, seven weeks. So when you look at a client who's doing $600,000 a month in revenue with a full sales team and a, an overhead and an operations, they're at a standstill and they're dead because they can't just spin up another, you know, ad account and be spending, you know, $100,000 a month tomorrow, it doesn't work that way. And, and, and that there is another lesson there, which is don't have all your eggs in one basket, which we try to tell people all the time, you know, maybe don't maybe have YouTube and TikTok and these other things going and, but it, it is what it is, right? So what we're seeing right now is a really increased level of sophistication on baiting you into clicking things to get access to your account. So we're seeing the sophistication of email phishing, it, it coming from Facebook and saying things like, you know, not like something you would expect, like, uh, you know, your account's been, you know, terminated or um, there's a fraud warning on your account. Please log in to confirm it's you. 
it's it's smarter now. Like we're about to cap your budget or reduce your daily budget by half. Uh, please confirm that it's you before this ha So you, it kind of goes around your red flags and goes right to like your soul. Like, whoa, oh my God, they're gonna they're gonna reduce my ad budget by half. Well, this can't happen. Let me log in quickly and sort this out. And the the sites they take you look to look exactly like your admin area in your business manager. Like everything's perfect. It looks the logos, the color scheme, the layout, and boom, they're asking you for your email. And boom, even if you've got two FA and you you enter their your two FA code or whatever, like boom, they got it. And then the first thing they do is they reroute all your traffic to some fake charity in some country that no one knows the name. And they ramp, they ramp your budget up to $10,000 a day because they're trying to get as much money as they can off your credit card before they get caught. And the fortunate thing is that, you know, Meta will refund you that money. So that's not the big issue. The big issue is even the money's you, not the big issue. The, the money's not the issue. You like, like the first thing the client just freaks out and they go, "Oh my god, you're spending all this money on my card!" And I said, "Well, call your bank and kill your card." Like it's common sense, right? But it, it's not that. That's the problem. The problem is you can't get your account back with all of your pixel data, with all of your audiences, with all of your history, with all of your creative. It, it's all gone, and you got to start from scratch. And if you've got a big machine rolling. It's a death blow on you. And and so, you know, what we're seeing right now is really high sophistication in email phishing, um, really high sophistication in direct messaging you. And and you'll actually see in the notifications, I actually sent three of these examples to my team this morning, which we'll go into a little bit more detail on. They'll say stuff like, I can almost pull one up for you right now, to be honest. Um, like there's so many of them happening right now. They'll say something like page quality score has messaged you and it'll have like the Facebook logo. And then when you go to the message, say your Facebook page quality is low, click here for next steps or whatever. So they're, they're messaging you and they're commenting on your ads and it's coming up in your notifications and it's all different derivatives of page quality score or, you know, FB security center or this or that. And if you're not paying attention and you take, make one wrong move, it's over. And so the big takeaway for the advertisers is never click anything pretty much because everything that you're going to need to do is always in your business manager. It's not external. They're not going to ask you to do something external. And even if for some reason they start to, you can do the same thing inside your business manager. So first and foremost, always do everything in your business manager. Number two, always have two-factor authentication turned on so that if somebody does, you know, hack your email or whatever, you know, it, it, you have to get a text on your phone to get in and, and really go back and look at your business manager and your ad accounts. Because I cannot tell you, Mark, how many clients we've worked with where we say, hey, add us as a partner. So that's first, you know, that's important. You should never be adding random people as admins in on all of your stuff. You add them as a partner so that then you can remove them whenever you want to. But even still, we'll go in and we'll we'll get added as a partner to their ad account, their pages, their pixels, and we'll pull it all up. And there's all these people in it. And we ask the client, who are these people that are in here that have access to all of your stuff? Oh, that was a guy that worked for us two years ago. Oh, that was an agency we hired three years ago. There's all these people that have access to all of your stuff. Well, first off, should they have access to your stuff still if they're not working for you? Probably not. And secondly, what if they get hacked? They've got access to your stuff. So it's all a big spider web that happens. So you have to be really diligent about your cyber plan with all of your marketing platforms right now. And I'll stop there for a second because I know I've been talking for like five minutes straight. Like, what are you seeing or how does how does that land with you? I mean, you're in the epicenter of digital marketing with, you know, digital marketer and all that stuff. Like, 
I would assume you're seeing an escalation in this, but but like, do you know like it's at this level right now? Oh yeah, no, it's it's at every level at, at even really large companies. Like you said, the MGM is getting hacked, and it's like the the sophistication. This actually all goes back to AI because I think what you're seeing hackers do is utilize AI as a tool, as a programming tool. And now, since the internet is how it is, you could view the source code for any page and literally just copy and paste it and a few more tricks and now you can't tell the difference between one website or another so i think if you uh i think the tendency of agencies and big companies too is i'm going to rely on the trillion dollar company to have good security and at this point you can't they don't have good security and the the threats that are coming online now are just so radically different than they've ever been that you can't guard against it. And and like you said, they're using sophisticated methods. Like what I see all the time, I see this on TikTok because I'm on TikTok a lot, is I'll get added like, oh, this person started following you. It'll be a friend of mine. And I'll be like, oh, that's weird. I'm pretty sure they did that already. And then the next day it'll be them again and then them again. And then I'm like, okay. And a couple of times I actually interact in terms of like they message me and they're like, hey man, what's up? I'm like, hey, how's it going? How'd it go at the whatever thing? And then and actually, that's a good security tool just just for anybody listening. If it is a friend of yours, they should know some relevant conversation you had recently and just mention it. And if they have no idea what they're talking about, then it's probably a bot or whatever. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think I'm in total agreement. I think the, the security risk is so high right now just because the threats are completely unknown and you have no barriers against them because we've never dealt with it before. So yes, I think everybody's risk. And then the other thing that you said that, that I think was spot on was, you know, the money that you lose from them stealing your credit card for a day is nothing compared to the money you lose when your your primary marketing method gets shut down for six weeks. Or And that's the best case scenario that you could actually get it back to that point. Best case scenario. In the meantime, <laughs> what are you doing you're standing there with a room full of staff looking at you going, where's our leads, boss? Where's our purchases? You know, where's our customers? You know, we got an inventory of a million units in the warehouse. Oh, guess what? It's Black Friday, Cyber Monday coming, and we're planning our whole year on selling in this month. And now we don't have a marketing method, right? Hey, everyone. I want to quickly interrupt the podcast for a special announcement. If you're listening to this podcast because you want to become a better marketer, then I want to share with you what I believe to be the most comprehensive digital marketing program on the market today. It's called the Digital Marketing Mastery Certification. You'll learn to leverage the tools and channels to predictably and profitably drive awareness, leads, sales, and referrals. Everything you need to know to become a true master of digital marketing. We'll take an in-depth look at the core digital marketing competencies, including content, email, social media, community, digital advertising, data and optimization, and more. After earning your digital marketing strategy certificate, you'll have the tools to effectively reach your target audience through a full scope marketing strategy. Get started today at digitalmarketer.com slash strategy cert. Like there's all these different derivatives and, and, and when we take a step back from the, 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 the client side that, the, that we're working with, now there's my side, right? My side as an agency, that was 30 some odd thousand dollars a month in retainers. And I have a really strong retention with my clients. So we, we multiply that by almost a year. And the client is saying to me, well, I can't, justify paying your retainer. We don't have anything going right now. And, and I'm like, but it's not my fault. It's your fault. And they're like, yeah, we don't really care. Right. So now it doesn't matter. And so now that just walked out the door of my business, you know, which that's hence the, the title $400,000 because there's about $400,000 that's walking out the door this week because of they clicked something stupid. And so we've actually taken the steps because, you know, if something's trending, you have to figure out the solution where now with new clients, they can't even get through our onboarding until they go through this very robust video description of all the things that could happen and all the things they need to go and clean up and all the things they need to put in place. And they need to sign off on the bottom. And the, the last slide literally says, if in doubt, don't click a freaking thing without asking us first. Right. Like, and it's going to be repeated on the pre onboarding call, on the kickoff call. We're going to be so militant about it. It's going to be overkill, but I, I don't feel like losing another 400 grand. You know, we could talk about these companies like, how are they going to recover? But the fact is, a lot of them won't. Because if you take a company that's doing, say, half a million dollars a month, they have 20 employees 
and then all of a sudden their 90% of their revenue is generated through Facebook ads and that gets shut down, they're operating on $50,000, right? So you better have really strong return customer, you know, which I mean, the probably the best one I have. Nobody does. Like I remember Ezra Firestone. Do you know Ezra? Oh yeah. Yeah. So Ezra and I play poker sometimes together. And, and I remember when, um, when, when COVID hit his, uh, inventory pipeline got shut down. And so his answer to the, the problem was, well, just turn off the ads. Problem was he had a 70% return customer rate. So even turning off his ads, he had people trying to buy stuff all day long and he didn't have an inventory to, to fulfill them. So good for him that he had such a strong brand that everybody would come back. But let's be honest, the majority of, of businesses out there don't have that strong of a return customer base, not enough to, to replace $600,000 a month in revenue coming in. There's, there's no way. Especially not instantly. Cause you know, you're not talking about like, oh, we're going to lose 90% of our revenue in six months. It's like, no, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow it's no, gone. And, and the client's like, okay, great. So can you just spin up YouTube or, or Google PPC or whatever? Uh, we can, that, that takes a really long time, you know. That campaign we were running took five years to make. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so I have to take ownership. I'm a big believer in extreme ownership. I have been literally saying for six months, we need to update this portion of our onboarding. We have like a, a small piece about it, but it's kind of like, hey, make sure you have two FA on and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I've been saying we really need to to, to amp this up. And you know what? God has a funny sense of humor where when you say you need to do something like six times, you don't do it. He just comes along and goes whack and says, how about that smart guy? And so, yeah, it's, it's my fault and it's your fault. If you're running an agency and you're not paying attention and you're not making this a priority, you, you will feel the pain. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll learn the lesson the hard way, which is, uh, you know, it's sad that it has to happen like that, but you know, it happens once and then you, you either do what you're doing, which is take some action steps to help prevent the situation, not just from a lost revenue perspective, but from, uh, taking care of your client, this person is going to hurt themselves unless you step in and give them advice on how not to. So in that way, I think it's our responsibility to do that kind of stuff too, on top of it being the most profitable way forward by not losing a bunch of clients that will then maybe never be able to come back. And so, yeah, no, I think that's, and just being a professional organization, you know, if you think of like, you know, big companies and how they're going to operate, if you spend a million dollars a month with them, they're going to take care of you. And, and that's what you expect and that that's what you should expect. So we're just being that. And I think that you you kind of made another point in there, which is when we have big clients, smart people, we expect that they already know and do the things that we're talking about. And the reality is that expectations will come back and bite you right in the butt because we have to assume Everybody has a grade four level of education, regardless of how smart they are and how successful they are. And we have to beat these things home, you know, with purpose because they, they often don't know, or they don't, they haven't prioritized it. They're too busy. They haven't prioritized it, you know? So it, it's our responsibility to assume everybody is a mushroom, you know, and, and treat them as such. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, it's hard because it's, you know, we always go back to ROI. Like, is it worth it? You're going to spend all this time making a course. You're going to spend all this time communicating this stuff and blah, blah, blah. We have all these other higher priorities, but at the end of the day, it's like, no, this is like a do or die situation. Like you take care of this or the cliff's right there and you're headed towards it and good luck. <laughs> we talk about ROI the last six months. I was like, yeah, the ROI isn't there. Well, the ROI would have been an immediate $400,000. So I guess the ROI would have been there. Yes. And that's, I think if you look at it that way, like stop dealing with the negative version, it's like, no, you got to keep this. So you're going to save your churn, call whatever you have to call it, but you know, make sure that it's a uh, top level priority because this is, this is coming. I have another uh, friend of mine, he's a, a cybersecurity executive and he's just like, he, you know, here's the things. And I'm like, oh yeah, those are all obvious things that everybody should be doing. And nobody does this stuff, you know, and the, and the biggest Actually, one of the trainings I took was what it said, the biggest security issue you have is humans. It's not software. <laughs> it's like, no, it's 
Sally, the receptionist, has an admin account and she got hacked and now the company's in it. Well, and I can take this a step further and I don't want to scare the, the pants off of everybody, but here's the reality, right? We we hired a, a professional firm this year. We hired a CISO, um, a chief information security officer. You know, we, we've, we've been proactive about that this year because I had this, again, this thing in the back of my head, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. But then if something goes wrong, it's literally a nuclear level event that that happens yeah and you knew it was coming but it was kind of like getting life insurance like no one's ever going to die right so why do i need life insurance but we put it in place and it was interesting in conversing with them where they said in in the u.s specifically the fines are so massive for every contact that are leaked that it, it literally is a zero-sum game you're going to be dead from the fines but if you can show that you had a team in place and you can show that you had a, a cybersecurity plan and policies and procedures, and you were being proactive about it versus reactive about it. The statistics in court is is that you will win in the and it will be thrown out ninety eight percent of the time, because the courts know hacking's going to happen. It's more about were you being responsible as a business owner or were you being negligent as a business owner that they care about. I mean, Equifax got the biggest hack in the history of the world. And, and six months later, they're working for the government and they're doing the cybersecurity for their pension fund. Like think about how ironic that is, right? So they know you're gonna get hacked. The question is, were you being proactive or were you being negligent? And so that's something for all business owners to think about because if you're being negligent and something gets hacked, and all the information gets leaked out, you are going to get hammer smashed in a lawsuit. And it'll be worth the couple days that it'll probably take to put this stuff in place. <laughs> like it's, it's, you know, it, it, not to do a good job at it, but just to do any job at it, it that's all it takes. It, it doesn't take a ton of work. And on top of the fact, you want your client to be safe and happy. And, you know, this is all just standard uh, customer service if you really break it down that far. And, you know, you don't want to get uh, sued to death, which is, you know, not fun. <laughs> no. And as we've got bigger, you know, the, the sophistication of what we need has gotten bigger. So right now we're probably having to put about 1% gross revenue into cybersecurity right now, which is not a small bill. No, no, that's when you're talking about a, a a zero sum scenario coming up. Would you rather invest one percent of your gross revenue into cybersecurity or be completely wiped out in one shot? Yeah, no, it's a no brainer, and and we all knew we were supposed to do it. I think we've all kind of got away with murder to date. <laughs> it's like we we knew as this was being implemented, my team they were just looking at all the stuff that that, that had been audited and and. <laughs> And what was being put in place, and they were just shaking their head, going, "Oh man, like, oh, oh man, oh, that was so bad, you know." And we kind of all knew it, you know. But we're, you just think, well, it's not going to be me. Like, it's 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 roulette. It's not going to fall on my nose. Yeah. Right? Now, what is it? What are the chances? <laughs> what are the chances? Right. The reality is, the chances are getting really, really high. Yes, it's the, well, it's not a chance anymore. It's just going to be everybody's going to be subjected to this because I think that the limitation that that AI kind of freed was that time and capacity issue for hackers. Like if you look at like, oh, well, I'm a hacker. I got put together this code to rip off this company. Now you could just do it 50 times faster and you can automate it. And the big companies obviously have no idea what they're doing so far. So it's you're not protected at any level. And you made a great point there because our CISO that we brought on said, just so you know, you're going to pay us all this money. You're still going to get hacked. Yeah. It's an inevitability. He said, but but it's going to be mitigated really quickly and you'll get hacked way less. And if anything ever goes wrong from like a lawsuit perspective, you'll have a leg to stand on. So I went, so let me get this straight. I'm paying you and you're telling me that I'm still going to get hacked. And they're like, yep. Because they said, in a long enough timeline, everybody's going to get hacked. He said, I guarantee you been hacked multiple times already. You just didn't know. Like it's, that's just, it's inevitable at this point. It is. And I think it's just, it's just another thing you got to do. You know, it's uh, from a marketing perspective, we know what we're supposed to do most of the time. And so you just got to sit down and do it. It's just a requirement now, not a suggestion. And you'll regret it if you don't do it. So 
Well, that was a, a scary talk, but I think a very important one that, that everybody's going to appreciate. If somebody wants uh, to get on your new program, your security enhanced marketing, uh, where can they find more information? Sevenmilemedia.com is uh, is our site. And uh, and if you want to reach out to me through direct message, um, I've been around since 2004, Mark. So you put in Aaron Parkinson, I own every single URL known to man. So however you want to contact me, if you even want an introduction to the cyber team we just brought on, yeah, I'm happy to make that introduction to them because I I, I know how scary the, the scenario can be and I'm just happy to share wherever I can. That's fantastic. Well, thank you for being so open with that. Uh, I'm sorry about your $400,000. I'm sure you'll make up for it in short order. You got to laugh it off, right? <laughs> well, who knows how many businesses you help just by talking about it. So really appreciate your time and always love hearing your thoughts on important subjects. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me on the show again. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to hit that follow button so you get notified when all of our new episodes release. Please share this with that friend who's clueless about digital marketing. And don't forget to visit digitalmarketer.com where you can access all of our courses, certifications, and training programs. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you next time.